All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Nabil El Gorori, who is uh, who hails normally from Virginia in Alexandria, but actually is in sunny San Diego today as well. How are you doing, Nabil? Very good. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. And Nabil is a psychologist and a principal at Executive Therapy and Consulting. Over 13 years experience as a nonprofit executive, including four years as a CEO of a $16 million, or $6 million association. Licensed psychologist who can see patients in over 30 states via telehealth, which is amazing. Telehealth is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and uh, and as a global speaker, uh, Nabil has spoken a, uh, to a number of organizations worldwide on mental health topics such as stress, wellness, burnout, imposter syndrome, and creating a culture of employee well-being. And today, we're going to talk about stress and anxiety. And here's a here's a thing, Nabil. Right? I mean, I feel like over the last number of years, you know, it's been exacerbated, obviously, with COVID and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we live, we kind of live in a culture where we we almost like celebrate stress at work, right? And uh, mm-hmm. we don't we don't really understand or appreciate uh, how how you know damaging stress can be to the to the human psyche. Absolutely, um, you know, in America we brag about not taking vacation days when actually. Uh, not taking vacation days is a huge sign of a symptom of stress and overwork and risk of burnout. And so we should be taking all our, our vacation and, and, and t- time off. Um, but we don't we don't really celebrate uh, coping well with stress. And so that's mm-hmm. some of the things that I'm, I'm really interested in working on. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so stress and then uh, and then anxiety, because, I mean, obviously, anxiety has um, so many different impacts. I mean, it has a, it has, you know, it is physical as well as mental as well as, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, anxiety can really af- affect people, but, and I think a lot of people really try to kind of bury it and keep it under wraps and that's, that's even worse, right? So yeah, anxiety has definitely gone up since the pandemic started. Um, a recent survey by the American Psychological Association showed that like a third of Americans are showing s- substantial symptoms of anxiety when it was closer to 20% prior mm. to the uh, pandemic. And the the physical sensations really are signals to your body to do something about. Um, and so not taking action to reduce your anxiety and stress is harmful in the long term. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the what are what are some of the you know manifestations or or you know somebody who is dealing with stress and anxiety how how does that manifest in in uh, in people's lives? Uh it manifests in a number of ways. So in the body you could easily see changes in heart rate, in breathing, typically both go faster, breathing gets shallower. So you start you know Maybe not that obviously, but if you notice your heart rate, it it would go up. Muscle tension can, you know, so your tightness in muscles, and it could be anywhere in your body, but, you know, your head, your neck, your hands or wrist, sort of tightness. Um, And then there are physiological changes like, you know, releasing of adrenaline in your body. Uh, and, And things you can do to reduce that, you know, is obviously um, deep breaths sort of slowing down and doing abdominal breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. So much longer breaths, holding it, and then um, breathing out. That can really reduce some of the stress. Another symptom is thoughts. You have automatic thoughts like, I'm, I'm useless, I'm worthless, I can't handle all this work, why'd they hire me? So those kind of thoughts might come as well. And, um, so that's that's another manifestation of anxiety. Mm-hmm. So then, how do we how do we start to address this? Because I mean, I I, I mean that statistic that you just gave a moment ago, going from twenty to forty percent, and there's there seems to be an epidemic of of anxiety and and of of loneliness, isolation, or just stress because 
let's face it, we're bombarded 24 hours a day from our little devices and all of that with like, mm -hmm. you know, negative news and scary and provocative things or comparison culture and all of this kind of stuff. It, it, it's, it's a very dynamic world that we live in. And I feel like uh, it's, it's hard for people to kind of shut out all this noise. Um, so what can people do? Uh, I yep. would say is, uh, you know, take moments for yourself during the day. So plan times where you go outside, you know, like, so, so many of us are doing remote work. And so we mm -hmm. just are in our office, in our home the whole day and, you know, take moments like you would have at work, at work, in the office, every hour or so you'd get up, you'd go walk, you'd go get a cup of coffee, you'd go talk to an office mate. Do the same things when you're working from home, but go outside, get some sunlight, get some air, take some deep breaths. Um, other things you could do, you know, one of the most stressful things right now is the news. The news mm -hmm. is built to raise your anxiety. They don't mm -hmm. talk about good news. They always talk about bad news. And so sometimes you have to cut news out of your life and like yeah. take, a, take a break from it. I personally haven't watched TV news since the 2016 election. I get my mm -hmm. news by reading. I get my news from Twitter. Um, and I can regulate when I, when I see it and how I hear it. And so I don't listen to the news anymore. And my anxiety has gone down substantially as a result. Yeah, I and mean, I think that's a really important point because I mean you're absolutely correct. I mean the the news today isn't designed to inform; it's designed to provoke. And it doesn't matter where you sit on the political spectrum. There, whatever news you you get, I mean they're looking to provoke because they want a reaction out of you. And and because it's and because we live in this like it used to be twenty. We talk about twenty four hour news cycles. Now it's like you know it's second by second, and you can get completely consumed in it. And that, and I guess that's the thing, Nabil. I think that is is the biggest challenge is to to get people to do what you did. It's like regulate, switch off, you know, take time to yourself. These are all seem counterculture almost nowadays. It can be. I mean, I think I think one of the things that I've done really is in being intentional about it. So you you know, if you feel you don't have time to do all these things, pick one pick one thing. And then add it to your schedule. Schedule in a break. Um, mm -hmm. Even better, even better, make your Zoom meetings, because we all are on Zoom meetings. Don't make it a full hour. Make it 45 or 50 minutes, because you will get your stuff done in the time allotted. Mm -hmm. And so you can schedule a 10-minute walk if you give yourself 45 minutes for a meeting. Get outside, have a deep, have a deep breath just some sunlight. And, you know, if you're in, I'm, I'm in lovely San Diego, I can't wait to go for a walk outside uh, later today. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I absolutely. And agree. And I guess when you go for that walk, don't be on your phone like this and doing all the things that you are trying to get away from. It's like, so here, here's a challenge. I think, Nabil, I think people struggle with being with themselves nowadays being with their own thoughts, taking time out because they, you know, I mean, part of it is they, you know, it, it's, it's habit and part of it is dopamine. And, you know, so we're not giving ourselves that opportunity to calm our minds. You know, I think that is really the case. Um, in particular, uh, TikTok and mm. the TikTok like videos in other apps, you know, and you reels and Facebook and on YouTube, they are literally seconds. And so we're used to sort of swiping and, and, and like, you know, liking. So one of the things you could do is take, take so digital, uh, social media breaks, you know, mm. so plan, you're not going to look at social media from certain times of the day, uh, limit that. <clears throat> I uh, deleted TikTok and realized I was spending like easily I could spend an hour on TikTok and not even know it mm. because I was just scrolling through things. And I was, I was laughing at, at the videos that, that came sure. up because I got humorous videos, but you know, that's time that I, I that's time that I've lost mm. and I'm not, I'm not getting a chance to do things that improve my life, you know, a uh, deep breath, um, any, any, any little things like that.
Yeah. No, I agree. I've had to wean myself off panda videos on the Instagram because uh, <laughs> I just look, look pandas are great. Um, but but it's a it's a it's a really important point though because I mean I've even seen it in you know my son's just turned eighteen and I even see it in his in his um, social group as because I've known them since they were kids growing up. But this addiction to where they have to be on the phone and they get anxious if they're not almost if they're not on their phone. And, and and we read about kids like that, as you said, TikTok, you know, needing that dopamine hit and they get highly anxious if they if they don't do it. I mean, these are these are real, real issues. Absolutely. I think, you know, um, I once went out with a, my, one of my nephews and he was, he was 20 at the time and he was able this is pre TikTok. So this is mm-hmm. this is about 10 years ago. Facebook was on, but not um, not really Insta videos. And he gave he went twenty minutes of conversation, and then after that, his head. Was, I was talking to his head, his yeah. head like on his phone. Um, I think one thing that people can do is is you know you know spend time with your thoughts. So, mm-hmm. like one strategy I do um, in the middle of the pandemic, my Keurig broke. And um, being cheap, I didn't want to spend 200 bucks on a new coffee machine. I started doing pour over coffees. I had a little mm. pour over thing. And I, you know, it, I would have my cup of coffee, what, at 6 30 in the, 6, 6 30 in the morning. And that five minutes became my mindfulness moment. I'm not mm. a meditator, but right. I could sit there, you know, I would, I measured out my water, uh, ground the coffee. And so when you grind the coffee, you can smell it and then um, boil my water to a particular temperature. I, I like two, 200 degrees and then, let, you know, um, pour it, you know, pour it in. And I would listen to the water dripping into my Yeti cup. Mm. And so I got I got some deep breathing. I got sensing of smell, hearing, you know, taste, touch of, of my cup. And the and the warmth of the um, of the of the kettle, my electric kettle, and so that five minutes, I'm not sitting there going ohm, right? I'm not like yeah. that's that's yeah, yeah. hard for me to do, but mm-hmm. I can sit there rather than scroll through some vi- videos and do this. I can do this to have five minutes of quiet, and it's a wonderful way to start the day, and then. And then enjoy that that much more delicious coffee because it's freshly roasted. I, mm. I you know I, I ground it that day, so it's so much better quality than any Keurig I'm going to get. And mm-hmm. have a nice cup of coffee, the quiet of the morning. You know, if it's nice, I can go outside and and you know hear the birds chirping. Five ten minutes like that. That's a wonderful start to a morning rather than rushing off to a Starbucks and wait in line. Mm-hmm. Or really, let's, let's keep it honest, wait in a in a queue at the drive through. Yeah. Know? Yeah. You know, that's what people are doing. You know, build it into things that you normally do in your life. Find mm-hmm. and create and, and create create spaces for yourself. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I mean, it's almost like, uh, you know, create these these small rituals that uh that almost like, you know, can become, you know, um, rituals, obviously, and habits and just those, those moments. It's, I I think that's a, I think that's a great idea and a great suggestion. Um, Tell me also, how can, how can companies and and employers and leaders and that, how can they help reduce anxiety and stress among the the workforce? Because like, as we said at the outset, I mean, we live in a culture that has traditionally celebrated, you know, the longer you work, the longer hours, the more stressed, the more wrecked you are, the greater you are, you know? So, I mean, how can we start to do that where we, where we sort of acknowledge that, no, that that's actually not the best thing at all? I think a great strategy is um, blackout time from work. So, set a clear time where no one is going to be doing looking at messages no one's going to be looking at email or working um and ideally make that time close to what would have been the shutdown time when mm-hmm. we were in the office so 5 or 5 30 p.m and then um what everyone can do uh is a shutdown ritual we used to have that shutdown ritual physical in that we would commute and so we would you know yeah leave the office and drive home, put on the podcast, music, talk to a friend, whatever. But now we don't do that anymore. So at let's say it's 5.30 shutdown time. 
okay, no one emails for the next two hours, like or or the rest of the day, ideally. Mm-hmm. But let's say for two hours. But and at five thirty, clean up your desk, plan out the next day, like two three things you need to do, the emails you have to do. Um, maybe send one email that you can do in one minute, not a mm-hmm. long email. Uh, here's the file as you as you request it. Attach. It's done. So you end with a win and then literally close the computer, close the, close the notebook. And if you have an office, walk out of the room, you know, do something that you can do every day that signals the end of the day. And on top of that, give yourself five to 10 minutes, go outside, get a walk, um, do a little bit of exercise. There are plenty of five and 10 minute videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. If you do a little exercise from home, do something that that shakes it up before you transition to the family, you know, Mm. uh, that kind of ritual. But that so that kind of break from work and support for a shutdown ritual can really make a difference both for your team and for yourself. And then for the leaders, you have to do it, too. You cannot. If you're saying 530 is the stop, don't be sending an email at 531. (laughs) Yeah, I mean it's a, it, it's it's fascinating, and obviously, as you said, because of uh, the so much the preponderance of remote working and virtual working, when people are in their home offices, they become twenty four seven offices, don't they? Largely, and it's uh, and it's that temptation. Uh, I think it's true. It's the temptation as you walk by the door. Let me just check things, and it's also the feeling of obligation. Well, I'm allowed to work from home, therefore I got to prove that I'm pretty much always online. It's also this having your yeah. phone. Everyone, all of us have our emails with us. Um, the truth is, there is rarely something that is truly an emergency you have to deal with, particularly mm-hmm. after five p.m. You know what some people might think of as a critical issue is um, not necessarily what is really. Uh, it's not. It's not crisis. So mm-hmm. we have just trained ourselves to react like every email is a crisis, but every email isn't. Let, wait till, till the next day. And as you start to do this, your team starts to learn, oh, we don't have to, we don't have to do everything immediately. We can wait till the next morning, you know, mm-hmm. and that kind, and that also relates to kind of our attention spans, right? We, we, we are so used to not doing, you know, entertaining ourselves, but also working on a, on a, on a TikTok schedule. We don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. And if you notice nowadays, it's, and, and, and this is kind of behaviors that have, you know, crept into the culture, but it's almost like when you're having a conversation with somebody and they get a text message, for instance, I mean, they now, it's now almost, uh, you know, it's almost habit to go, oh, just hold on a second. Now, back to the conversation, instead of let's finish the conversation and then I'll take a look at this if I need to. And it, it's subtle things like that where you see the the digital becomes more important than the human. I think one of the most important things leaders can do is their attention. So what I would do when I, when I was uh, talking to a staff member, if I had a planned meeting, not a, a, you know, mm-hmm. a drive-by, Sure. Um, when I had a planned meeting, I would literally get up uh, for, away from my desk to the table. And at the yeah. table, I didn't have my computer. So the, compu- so the notifications would not distract me. And I would not respond to texts or emails. Um, and that way, you had my attention. Because that is, that is the most important thing, is, is attention. And when, you, when, I look at, when I look at my phone, uh-huh. Just a second. Mm-hmm. This is more important than you oh, yeah. at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the rare occasion that something is super critical, sure. Those those you know you know um, you know if there's a shooting at a school and you need to go find yeah. your kid, that is sure. different. You know, I am sorry, I cannot. I have to end this meeting right now. Mm-hmm. But then end the meeting. Don't have them yeah. waiting with you. You know, and you can do this digitally as well. You know. Um, ignore notifications, put the notifications on silent so you don't get dings, um, you, you know, not look at your email when you're having a Zoom meeting. Your attention 
is one of the best uh, things an employee can can get. You know, use it value. You know, use it uh, use it with with power and mm -hmm. and with and, and with wisdom. You know, the wisdom is give it to them. Give your your employees your attention. Yeah, and the other thing, uh, uh, one thing recently, uh, somebody was telling me that they did a they did a, an engagement or consultant with their company, and they asked afterwards the the employees who'd come to them. They said, "What was your biggest takeaway from this?" And they said, "We felt seen and heard, and, and understood. You know, seen and heard and understood." And he was like, "Wow." Uh, I wasn't expecting that. That sort of seems baseline to me. But I think that's the issue is that people don't feel seen or heard or understood. And part of it is because the people they're, they want to be seen, heard and understood by are not really paying them any attention or enough attention. Um, I think in, in a digital world, you have to be very intentional about, mm -hmm. about providing that kind of feedback and opportunities for, for your team to talk to you directly. Um, in, you know, in the, in a, in an office based world, you could just easily walk by someone's office. Hey, how you doing? Checking in. How's it going? But, um, in a digital world, you can't really do that. And so I think, um, you know, planning meetings and then at the beginning of a meeting, check in, H how's mm -hmm. it going? How, how, how's, how's family life? How are the kids? And mean it. Like, don't right. be doing it like a checklist. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, so how was how was your daughter's play? You, you know, listen, listen to them, pay attention. Because knowing that you pay attention to those details creates, um, it, first of all, they, they feel heard, they feel valued, and they become loyal. Like, mm -hmm. you want to work with someone who pays attention to you and yeah. knows what's going on in your life. And if and teach your team to do that, that is that yeah. that is probably the critical thing is teaching your managers to do that, because we don't really give people a lot of training in this. And so training in empathic listening, reflective listening and modeling that for your team critical. Yeah, I, I would even go far as to say we absolutely don't, or it's so rare. Uh, to be right. honest, I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, I can't think of any time I've I've come across any organization that that really really does that. Um, so listen, this is fantastic. Some great takeaways. I love the idea that Nabil for people to take away is like establish those quiet routines where you have to pay attention to something that's other than digital or your work and just create those little rituals every day, make them habitual. So therefore they become, and as you said, like even get those meetings, like stop them like 50 minutes, you know, 45 minutes. So you have time to decompress, et cetera. I think this is so critical because I mean, I, I do think there's uh, well, let's face it, anxiety and stress, it never leads to anything good. Does it physically or mentally? <laughs> Well, some stress is good. I mean, some sure, stress yeah, is good performance. Too. It's when we get over that hump. And mm -hmm. the goal of, of stress management and or therapy is to get you to that optimal performance of stress, optimal level of stress. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thanks again, Nabil. Thank you for watching and listening. All Nabil's information will be below this video. But before we go, Nabil, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. Uh, I am a psychologist and principal at Executive Therapy and, co and Consulting. So I do uh, virtual psychotherapy with executives and leaders across the country, including uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, Illinois, Texas, Pennsylvania, um, and 25 other states. Uh, and I speak to businesses and organizations about mental health uh, and, uh, and do trainings for for teams and for uh, for organizations. So you can reach me at Nabil at executivetherapy.solutions. My website is executivetherapy.solutions. Yeah, fantastic. Go check it out, Tavi. I think I'm. This is why we're focusing this uh, first quarter of Sales Papa on on mental health and all this, because I think it, it, it. I think it's so critical, and I think we're at that point where people have to really start to pay attention to it because yeah. it's 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 getting it's getting bad yeah, all right all right well, listen thank th you thanks again nabil thank you all for watching and listening and i'll see you all again soon yeah.